Okay, so now we're moving on to some other things that aren't in extended primitives. These are under the drop down under the create menu, we've got more options. Some which you won't really get a good handle on yet, although you definitely go and have a look at them in the help menu. Um, one of them in particular is the stair option. Okay, What I've done here is I've created a small staircase based on a set of parameters um, under the straight object type. We can also very quickly generate spiral staircases like so. And um, you know L type stairs so in, it's kind of referring to what it looks like in plan and U type stairs. So I'll start off with the straight staircase. Okay. Um, we've got the option to keep it open as it is now and I've just gone over to the modifier tab. We could have a closed option, we could have a boxed option. Okay, so you're limited by the parameters, but they are quite flexible. We could also make it a little bit longer, which increases the size of the tread. We can change the width of the staircase. We can get rid of what's called the carriage underneath to make it a little bit more abstract. We can turn off and on handrails. We can also increase or decrease the height, and we can lock particular parameters that are associated with the height or the rise and the number of rises that divides it up. Okay. Uh, you can give the steps a, a depth and then you can also um, apply materials to these. Okay. As for the spiral stair, uh, we have different parameters. There's a closed option and a boxed option. There's also the option to put a center pole in there and I'm not too sure but I'm sure that there is an option that will give you, yes there is, a, uh, a to be able to specify the radius of that shape okay and how many segments it makes up and how high it goes actually so it can actually be taller than the staircase itself we then have some options within here to change uh, and I'll put the um, carriage back in the composition of it you can say it's either counterclockwise or clockwise you can specify how big the inner radius is and how many revolutions the staircase takes before it gets up to the desired overall rise like so and you can also specify um, you can see that these two are locked so the more rises you give the higher that goes All right. or inversely you, you pin how high that wants to go and it will change but keep that parameter of the, the overall height uh, in check Okay, so that, I mean, the easiest way to actually get in and learn these things is to play with them yourself. So I'll leave that one for now. Now, moving on to the next piece of geometry, we have um, a very restricted, um, or I, I guess not restricted, but limited selection of um, extended object types, I guess. Uh, one of them being foliage and the 3D Studio Max will actually give you a small selection of kind of North American species of trees which aren't too great to use but may help generate um, for you some you know base geometry that then you can go and use for um, enhancing or furthering so in its native form I can't say that they're too inspired these trees but uh, yeah try to adapt them and, and make them work for you I guess um, and all of these are associated with parameters as well so when we go into foliage like I've just selected the one that I've created which was I believe a um, American Elm um, we jump over to the modifier tab there's a series of parameters that will alter the makeup of that tree and of course the parameters are as much limiting as um, advantageous so when you haven't got it selected it kind of gives you this um, appearance that's rationalized and that helps preserve memory when you're working within the software and when I select it you can then start to see its composition now if I just put on edged faces you'll see that the tree is actually made up of all these two-sided meshes or the leaves are in anyway um, we can actually turn the leaves off if you want to abstract it further 
Okay, so now we're not so species specific. It doesn't look like a bad American elm. It looks like an abstracted tree. Um, kind of gives you a winter scene as well. Uh, you can take it further. We can actually take the trunk out so it becomes this spindly um, you know, network of um, branches that could be, uh, you know, you could shrink them to create a, a, a bush, I guess. Um, if we take off the branches, etc, etc. So you've got a few click boxes. And the other one is, um, which should be noted, is the seed, or the re which uh, correlates with the, gener the randomness um, each time one of these is generated. So if we copy this one, at the moment it's got the same seed. The two trees are exactly the same. If you wanted two trees that looked very, very different but have many of the same parameters, such as height, you just click through on the, the seed button and you can see now that they are, although very similar in height, have a different um, makeup of mesh faces. All right. So you can we can change the pruning all right, up to one. Gives you again a different type of tree, different densities um, of leaves can be attributed to this. And of course you've got the height parameter. Okay. Now the last very brief point I think I want to make here is that it's very easy within this three-dimensional software to create a whole heap of um, geometry that's viewed as um, an object. Whereas I think what you really need to do, especially with your required submission, is see each one of these um, objects in the context of a shot or a camera viewpoint, okay? Because a lot of the time you can eliminate um, much of the scene or rationalize it down so you don't have to build so much, which will save you a lot of time, if you compose the shot first, okay? And that goes to actually setting up the aspect ratio. And we've covered some of that in other um, technical lectures. Okay, so here I just select, I've just created a camera. You might work with rules such as foreground, middle ground, and background. We can set this at kind of eye height. I'm just looking back on all these bits of geometry that I created. We could have the trees in the foreground. And uh, I guess what, what we can do is we can, it, once we've created that camera, we can actually start to arrange um, where these objects sit within the shot. And if you remember, we've got our save frames, which we can turn on, hitting Shift F, which will then set the little viewport to the same ratio as what we're eventually going to render it as. Okay, so that's where we set our output size and uh, pixel resolution, and then the actual aspect ratio is mimicked with this save frame. So we might actually move closer to the trees, um, or in another way, what I'm going to do is just select using this little plus uh, the target. You know, we start to compose the shot in terms of uh, composition. Doing this, all right, and then hit render accordingly. But um, you know, it's up to you how you want to adapt a lot of these techniques. Uh, as far as composition goes, it's more um, th this technical lecture is an opportunity, I guess, for you guys to see that there's uh, other modelling techniques beyond those that we have explored already.